awesome. All right. So aloha and aloha and welcome to our Mahi Ai webinar. Um, o hulali ko oinoa no kapa'a puna um, mayau. My name is Hulali, and I'm from the island of Kauai, from the moku of Puna and the ahupua'a of Kapa'a. So that's the east side of Kauai. We have all the beautiful um, sunrises, and our island is also known for producing a lot of kalo. Um, so we have a lot of great food growing here on our island, but kalo is definitely our jam here on Kauai. And... So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about our Hui Hanai Ai cohort and grant program. Um, so a little bit about Malama Kauai first. It's a community-based nonprofit organization. Uh, we focus on increasing local food production and access for a resilient Kauai. And we've been doing this since 2006 through a number of Tons of programs, actually. So first is our farmer support, where we offer a lot of education, technical assistance, um, grant writing, in internships, um, ag workshops throughout the years. Um, we're also known for our farm to school work, which we've been a leader of since 2018. Um, we've installed many school gardens on campuses across the island, as well as orchards. We even helped um, some of our Hawaiian immersion schools put together meal programs to feed their keiki. Um, we've also been food access coordinator since 2018 for the county of Kauai. And with that work, we've been able to gather community residents, stakeholders, agencies, organizations to create our 2030 Kauai food access plan that's on our website with great objectives that our community um, voted on to work towards achieving in the next seven years together. Um, we are very well known for our emergency response, especially during the floods that we experienced a few years ago, landslides that have happened, as well as the pandemic. Um, we do a lot of free food distributions. Uh, we also started Hawaii's first gleaning program called Village Harvest, where we'll go out and pick fruit from folks' trees and then put them into our keiki and kupuna programs. Um, so a lot of feeding is being done. And then we also buy and sell food through our food hub. So we really, we really strive to dynamically fill the need of our community as it relates to food security. Um, but supporting farmers is our jam. We love it so much. To me, they're our me'er, our heroes. Um, and everything we do is to increase the food production and access here on the island. So how we treat our mahi'ai is, is very important to us. Um, it's everything to us. So uh, over the past few years, we've distributed over $650,000 in grants to farmers. Um, also supporting farms with 40 plus interns and providing a quarterly farmer newsletter with other grant opportunities, tons of educational events, resources, webinars, workshops, all that good stuff. Um, we love to share that with our network. And then Malama Kauai will also write uh, grants for farming groups or even fiscally sponsor grants for farming groups as well. Um, we've done that for Kaala uh, Le'a Anahola Hui and the Waioli Valley Taro Hui, as well as a few others. Um, we've hosted hundreds of workshops, expos, events, and then we also love to share buyer demand with our producers quarterly. So anyone who's who sells through our food hub gets like this market intel that um, we get directly from our customers and like what they want to buy and eat. So really, we listen and then we act. We have a ton of things uh, published on our website, um, farmer surveys, uh, analysis from focus groups that we've done in 2020 to last year. And we also have our Kauai Food Access Plan published there as well that you can go check out on malamakauai.org. So that's just a little bit about us. 
Um, I wanted to talk about our food hub real quickly. It's uh, that building there is when it was still under construction. It's we need an updated photo actually, but um, it's almost done. It's being inspected by the Department of Health, hopefully next week. Um, <laughs> but we launched the food hub in 2020. Um, working out of an office temporarily while the building is being um, built. Um, this food hub program helps over 140 food producers, primarily here on Kauai, but also I am across the islands, to market and distribute their products on Kauai to over 100 commercial clients and 1,200 yes. residents. Um, we also host various programs that run through our food hub. Uh, so we're purchasing produce to then fill and deliver kupuna produce bags or keiki food boxes during the summer. Um, each year we purchase over $500,000 in local food products. This year we've actually um, exceeded our goal and have reached over $740,000 um, purchased in local food products. So if you ever want to check it out, our food hub is kualocalfood.com. Um, quickly, how it works for our producers, like you folks in the room, um, you would sign up with us online on kualocalfood.com. And then once you do that, we'll reach out to you and be like, hey, we want to buy your stuff. Let's do this. Um, then you'll send us a voided check so we can do direct deposit. So it's really simple to get you paid. Um, and then we really just dive into like the products and the strategy of sales for your business and how we can make that work. Um, we also will create a producer profile for you and take fancy pictures of all the products that you um, make and then put it on our food hub every week um, or, if, you know, however often that you feel comfortable providing yeah. those products for us. Um, your products will sell. And whatever is sold, you then get a pick ticket. Um, and then you can either drop those products off to us in four different locations across the island. And then you get paid within 14 days via direct deposit and then do it again the following week or the following month, however you want to set it up. So um, definitely uh, welcome any questions on kuailocalfood.com. We have an amazing FAQ page that you can check out for producers specifically. Um, now that you kind of know us a little bit more, we wanted to dive right into our Hui Hanai Ai program. And real quickly, Hanai Ai is a term we use um, for a food provider. So that's someone that feeds um, and also give food to. So our um, Hui is going to be a nine-month program. Um, and it supports Kauai-based indigenous food producers. So I know uh, a lot of you in the room are on different islands. We're just going to be working with Kauai um, indigenous food producers during this program. Um, but we are in the know. And if you sign up for newsletters, we can share other opportunities on other islands with you. Um, but for my Kauai folks, um, you know, anyone of Native Hawaiian descent who is a farmer, rancher, or value-added food producer can apply to join this cohort. Um, and we'll be providing technical assistance, marketing and distribution services, and then those grant funds of up to $5,000 to help scale your business. Um, the program in, an, in its entirety is a two-year grant. We're funded by the Native American Agriculture Foundation. Um, and just a little background on that, it's a trust that was established because of a class action lawsuit um, that was um, because of discrimination happening against indigenous folks on the continent, um, not receiving grant fundings because of their race. So they, um, they were able to acquire millions and millions of dollars, which they then put into a trust and then issue out to indigenous led organizations to then re-grant out to indigenous people. So that's why we can focus on Kanaka Maoli um, for this program specifically. And the goal is to increase indigenous producer access to capital. So really just, you know, not just giving you the money, but also the long-term 
equipment and supplies that you need to continuously access that capital and grow your business is the goal of this program. Um, we're also going to be exploring gaps in our food systems. I mean, we spend so much time talking about the challenges and the barriers. We know where the pukas are um, and really how can this program help support you to maybe fill a puka that you see that you want to fill. Um, but it's all collaborative work, right? We got to work together to do it and um, support this cooperative system of distribution. And really putting our Kauai residents, especially our most vulnerable, first. And then just a little insight into our current food hub producers. Um, we have 20.7% are Native Hawaiian. So that's pretty awesome. We do keep track of those demographics. But to me, I see a lot of room for growth and opportunity. And I'd love to see more food producers um, who are Kanaka Maoli selling. Uh, food through our food hub. And so we can get into the nitty gritty of the grant. Um, 11 awards will be made each year. So this year we'll be issuing 11 awards. Um, with that, you'll be getting one-on-one -on -one technical assistance with me, myself and the team um, in monthly check-ins. And that's just to keep on track, make sure you're you're going working towards your food business goals. And then if you have any questions, if you need mana'o, um, we're here to help. And then you also get $5,000 in grant funding and that's to purchase tools, equipment, and do any other um, capacity building items to support your business's long-term growth. And we'll, we'll go a little bit deeper with that because I know when it comes to buying things like can I buy this? Can I buy that? So we have kind of like a, an outline of what can and what no can. Um, we're also through this program be offering marketing and distribution support through our food hub. We have a whole team for that. Arminda is one of them pictured here on the slide. She's amazing. Um, and then we'll also be including you on Kanaka Economic Data Alliance's uh, Native Hawaiian business directory too. So that's online, kanakaeconomy.com. And Kalea, who runs that, has, gosh, over a decade of experience helping Native Hawaiians like run really successful businesses. So she's an amazing resource as well that we'd love to connect you with. And then the other um, kind of kuleana that you would have as being a cohort member is attending our cohort dinner. <laughs> at the end of the program in October. And that's just to further encourage this collaborative kako, you know, connection between our native owned food businesses. Um, and then so use of grant funds. We have some examples here. And again, I'll say that the grant funds are meant to be used for longer term investment in your business growth. So we, re we cannot support operation costs that needs to be built into your business's profit, right? Um, but we're hoping to invest in that long-term. So for example, if you own a chicken farm or you're running a chicken farm um, and you, you need stuff, right? So the eligible expenses will be with the star, um, a new chicken coop, a chicken tractor to expand your flock. Awesome. Um, an incubation system to hatch your own chicks so you don't have to fly them in from an outer island. Amazing. Um, feed storage containers so you can buy in bulk to lower costs, even like solar panels for your storage shed so you can just run more efficiently. Um, all of those things are totally up for grabs and we're down to support and purchase for you. Some things that we can't buy would be feed or new chicks, because again, those are more of like operation costs. Um, for value added producers, we can cover the cost of the deposit for your first commercial kitchen use. Um, we'll love to buy cooking or packaging equipment and tools like large pots, heat sealers, a Vitamix, you know, anything you need to a pressure cooker, um, even a cold storage unit for your zone. Those are all eligible. Um, some things that we can't purchase for you would be packaging supplies or ingredients because, again, operation cost, or um, we can't pay for your commercial kitchen rent. 
just for that first deposit. And then for produce farms, equipment, tools, fencing, wash station, we would love to buy you trees if you want, even mature trees so that they're fruiting sooner. Um, even equipment to make your own fertilizer because we often hear that fertilizer prices const are constantly going up. Um, so you can make your own if you want to. We can't buy fertilizer for you. We can't buy seeds and we can't buy starter plants. Um, but we can buy all those other things. So we'd love to talk story. When you apply, we can talk story and um, really figure out what's best. Okay, picture of me. So sorry, hello. What we're looking for, this is actually, um, we hosted an Indigenous Peoples Month, um, kind of like a cultural food exchange during November and brought in a bunch of um, value-added products made by Indigenous folks across the continent, Turtle Island. Um, so those are all the things that I'm sitting next to. And hopefully we can get more of our Kanaka Maoli products on the table too. So what we are looking for for Hui Hanai is, are you Native Hawaiian? Um, are you Kauai based? Do you produce food? You make food? Um, you grow food? You raise food? You're in. Um, we also would love and prefer folks with some previous experience in sales um but honestly if you're dedicated to your business being a success we are stoked to work with you so just reach out um you can be a farmer a rancher a value-added product maker those are all cool we just need to make sure that whatever you're making includes ingredients that are grown by you or raised by you or harvested by you we are really not interested in products that are made 100% from Costco, okay? That's not our jam. We're, we're about supporting our local food system. So your ingredients, some of them, at least one, hopefully like three, four, five, half <laughs> is um, locally sourced. Um, and then we also want to target in-demand products in the market. You know, diversity is beautiful. We need a variety, right? We cannot all be making the same thing. Um, so, and we can help guide that. Um, I have a whole slide with all kinds of stuff that we're gonna look at pretty soon. Um, and then previous grantees. So we do run a lot of grant programs. So anyone out there that already has a Malama Kauai grant, you are eligible to apply, but you must be compliant with and on target to reach the goals of any other grants that you may have received from us before you can start a new one, right? We wanna make sure that the, the maintenance is happening before we build the new road, yeah? Fix the pothole, build the new road. <laughs> so yeah, but again, please reach out to me if you have questions. Um, and then bonus points. If you're an active vendor and already selling to us, we know you follow through and we'd love to continue working with you and sharing, you know, money with you to grow. Okay, so here's that radical slide of all the products that are in demand. We also highlighted some because we run a summer feeding program called Cow Cow for Keiki. And we're, we're like, last year, we were desperately looking for local fruit. We could not find local fruit to save our lives because everybody was kind of still selling into like hotels and farmers markets and it's a really great opportunity to be able to sell so any kind of citrus um and maia or bananas that we can get our hands on i know citrus season isn't really during the summer but you know <laughs> maybe long gone what else did we do watermelon um papaya all that good stuff is definitely needed in the summer, but then also consistently throughout the year. There's some other fun fruit trees we see here on this list, like figs, lily koi is a vine, but that's also amazing. Um, whoops. Oh, I don't know how to go back. There we go. <laughs> um, also looking for sweet potato, but not the Okinawan because the market is flooded with that. But we really love to see some orange or white yams. And I really want some watercress. So if anybody wants to sell us some. <laughs> um, and I'll be sending out these slides so you guys can take a look at those closer because the list is very long. 
Um, then, so just our application and program timeline. So first, grant info session, you are here. Mahalo for joining us. Um, we won't be hosting another one in early January. Sorry, that's a typo. This is it. <laughs> um, applications are going to be due January 31st. They can be found on the site there in bluegreentinyurl.com slash hui hanai ai. Um, and it's a very short form for an application to fill out. If you need kako'o in any way, if you want to just tell me your answers over the phone, you're welcome to give me a call and I can input the, the information onto the application as well. Um, info will be shared with the Native Hawaiian Business Directory because this is funded by the Native American Agricultural Fund and it is specifically for Indigenous folks. They do want to make sure that whoever we are granting is of Kanaka Maoli descent, so that will be tied into that Native Hawaiian Business Directory as well. And there's a way to like um, submit your paperwork just to, sorry to say prove, but yes. Um, and then we'll also be hosting or conducting grantee interviews on a rolling basis as the applications come in. Um, so please apply early. We already have four folks that have been accepted into the cohort. So that leaves seven spots to fill. Um, and we really, really want you to apply. So please try um, and reach out. And let's see, February 1st is when grants will be awarded and our monthly one-on-one -on -one check in start. Thank you. Marina put the link in the chat to apply. Um, you're welcome to copy and paste that into your browser or just save that somewhere and apply after the webinar is po. And then the grantee closeout dinner that I mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, will be in October. And so, yeah, we encourage you to apply. Uh, reach out to me. I have my work line there and then my email if you need any assistance or have any questions. And also, if you do have any questions, there is a lot of time at the end of this webinar to answer them for both myself and the Hilo Food Hub Hui. Um, please just put those questions in the chat and we can get to them or you can even ask them yourself in real time. So thank you so much. And I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to the lovely Amanda and Anthony of Hilo Food Hub. Aloha and welcome folks. Aloha and mahalo Stormy for inviting us and hosting this webinar. Um, you guys have, Malama Kauai has been an inspiration for us since we got a little deeper into the, the food system. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with us, we are Ho'ola Farms and we operate the Hawaii Farm to Car Market, which is similar to the uh, Malama Kauai Market. And we also run the Hilo Food Hub Commercial Kitchen for rent. So we're gonna talk to you today a little bit more about value added products and uh, how to go about making them uh, from a regulatory standpoint. Let me go ahead and share my screen here. So you can check out all our programs at oolafarms.org. And I personally run our intro and groundwork to grow trainings, which are one day and four week long courses on different topics like value added products, uh, master food preservers, art of beekeeping, uh, greenhouses, agribusiness, stuff like that. Um, Ho'ola was actually founded in 2015 as Ho'ola Veteran Services to support uh, military veterans and their families in entering agriculture. So our mission has expanded over the years. We took over the Hawaii farm to car market uh, in Hilo. And then we also took over the Hilo food hub, which is our commercial kitchen for rent. And uh, Amanda, who's also with us, is our manager of the Hilo food hub. She's gonna join us as well to talk a little bit more about permits, but I'm gonna run through a couple slides first on value-added products. Oops. 
So what are value added products? Uh, the USDA definition, a change in the physical state or form of a product. Milling wheat into flour or making strawberries into jam, cacao into chocolate. Uh, and other packaged products. This is usually what people mean when they're talking about value-added products. Anything that's processed in some way and put in a package. Um, however, the production of a product in a manner that enhances its value is also a value-added product. Uh, Kobe beef is a good example, Kona coffee. Um, one of my favorite examples is what's the difference between a green bell pepper and a red bell pepper? It's like a dollar fifty a pound. Um, it's the same vegetable. Uh, one's just more ripe. So you can really add value um, in a lot of different ways to your products. Uh, this is an example of a product that uh, is produced in the Hewa Food Hub. Uh, Uproot Origin by Megan Brady. He makes these delicious, uh, this delicious activation elixir um, with local Olena and ginger. And you can see also what goes into a value added product is the label, the packaging, and the brand. Uh, a resource that I would suggest everyone look at if you're interested is this adding value to locally grown crops in Hawaii by Ken Love and Craig Elovich. Um, Stormy, I think we'll be sharing a link uh, to this and a lot of the other stuff we're talking about today. So it covers all these topics, crop selection, crop management, different preservation techniques, the labeling, And this is uh, what I like to call the value supply chain uh, of an agriculture product. So you can really add value to your product along every link of this chain. Um, whether it's harvesting, for example, like the like the bell pepper, you can harvest later and that could add value. Or maybe you have, um, you know, microgreens or baby carrots. You can harvest earlier and that can add value. And then of course your processing, uh, what are you making, packaging, right? What you put your product in, um, that can determine how much value you add to your product, right? If you have a really, just like a, you know, a plastic bag um, versus a professional package with a professional label, that's gonna cost you a little bit more, but it's also gonna add value to your product. And then of course, marketing and your brand, your inventory and fulfillment, and where are you selling your product? And you might want to consider which steps in this chain of, you know, production uh, that you want to do and which ones you might want to outsource. Maybe you can't do all of these things. Maybe you need to, uh, you know, you can't grow all the ingredients. You need to purchase some of them. Or maybe you're not interested in making all this other stuff and selling it. You just want to find somebody who's making value-added products and supply them with your produce. So it all depends on what your goals are. Um, another way to add value to your product is uh, with marketing and specifically with uh, labels and licenses. Is your product... Can you put made in Hawaii? Um, you can get the made in Hawaii with Aloha or the Hawaii seal of quality. Uh, veterans, veteran farmers can do the homegrown by heroes label. So there's different things like this that you can look into that can add value. But I think what a lot of people really wanna know is how do I get started, right? Uh, how do I make these products uh, what does the Department of Health require me to do, et cetera. So for that, I'm going to bring Amanda into the fray. Amanda, you want to unmute? Yes. Aloha, everybody. My name is Amanda Cox. And like Anthony said, I'm the manager of the Hilo Food Hub. 
Um, basically, we help everyone um, who walks in our door with what they need to get started with whatever product they want to start selling um, out of our kitchen. And the biggest question that we first ask people is, uh, what are you making and who do you want to sell it to? And, and if you even need a certified kitchen as well. Um, on our website, we have everything from the equipment to prices. Um, but the reason that we ask if you even need a kitchen is some of the products that you might be making at home. And this is on our county website. Um, everyone can look at this um, this uh, poster that's up. Is Do you even need a kitchen? Do you even need a certified kitchen to uh, use to make your product? And if the answer is yes, then we keep going. If the answer is no, then you don't have to have a certified kitchen. Um, and that just basically is based on the risks of high risk or low risk. Um, and and it's most importantly, of course, let me, sorry to, sorry to, no, 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 you're good. but most importantly, where will your food be sold? That's the number one question, right? So if you want to sell it on Hawaii farm to car or through the Malama Kauai market, that's considered a retail location and you need to use a certified kitchen. Um, but if you have a low risk product, like Amanda's saying, then you can just use your home kitchen, but that's only for direct to consumer sales. Yep. No, Back thanks for saying that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, in, if you do need a kitchen, then we start the process of who you want to sell to again. Um, do you want to sell at a market? then you could use what is called the special event food permit. Or if you want to sell wholesale, like through um, Hilo Food Hub or Malama Kauai, then you need a food establishment permit. And this is very important. Um, the certified kitchen becomes your support kitchen. And then we ensure that we have everything um, in place with us applying for the permit. And that is where we are able to help you out and get your product um, processed and sellable legally. And this is the same permit, this food establishment permit for any institution, whether you're a food manufacturer or a, you know, a hotel kitchen or a restaurant or a support kitchen. Uh, this is it's the same permit for everybody. This uh, this food establishment permit, and this is the one where uh, you get your green placard at the end, um, and it requires an inspection. Um, as Amanda was saying, there's also the the special event permit, but look look we're going too far. The special event permit is really only for direct to consumer sales at, for example, like farmers markets. And each permit is tied to a specific location. So if you're selling at multiple locations, you have to have a permit for each of those locations with the date that you're selling listed on the permit. So we won't go too far into that. If people have questions, we can, we can answer them. But if you're interested in making value added products and selling them in stores or through online markets, you need to get the food establishment permit. Uh, Amanda, do you want to add anything else? No, um, it's basically um, detailed or, or curtailed to each each farmer and each producer because everyone's selling a different type of product, and um, and uh, where and who you want to sell it to. So I just That's wish right. everybody luck. Yeah. And, and if you're if you're on Hilo side of Big Island, give us a call. Um, so again, just to review that food establishment permit, that's the one required if you want to sell products retail or wholesale. Commercial kitchen is required. Uh, you need a food handlers permit. That's required. Um, that's like $8 online, takes 30 minutes, or it's free through the county. You need to have your label. Um, there's a good resource on what's required to have on your label. Uh, you need to turn in a letter of intent and process flow along with your application. And that's basically like a uh, list of what you're making, what the ingredients are, and the process flow is kind of like your recipe. And depending on your product, you may be required to have a HACCP plan. Um, that can be a 
big obstacle for for people. Uh, that's a HACCP is a, a hazard analysis and critical control point. Um, it's basically like a letter of intent and process flow, but more detailed and written by a professional. And that's required for specialized processes um, as determined by the FDA, which include fermentation, acidification, vacuum sealing, anything that involves a cook and chill process. Uh, for example, like frozen burritos, if you, if you want to sell a frozen burrito in the store, um, you cook the burrito first, right, in the kitchen, and then you chill it, and then you vacuum seal it, that's going to require a HACCP plan. So technically, you can write a HACCP plan yourself, but uh, it's a, you know, it has to be in scientific language. It's a scientific document. Uh, so you can get a HACCP plan through a number of different consultants or laboratories. Uh, there's plenty on the mainland, and there's we have some locally here in Hilo. I'm not sure what the Hawaii uh, HACCP uh, providers are, but um, they don't need to be local to, to create a HACCP plan for you. So again, examples of products that are gonna require a HACCP, kimchi, hot sauce, uh, juice is, is highly regulated. Um, and then things that don't require a HACCP is jams and jellies uh, for the most part, uh, cookies and other simple baked goods, things like that. And with that, uh, I want to open it up for questions. Feel free to type things into the chat as well and uh, can bring Stormy back on awesome, to answer guys. any questions about value-added products. I know a lot of people, it kind of depends on what you want to do. So if you're like, well, I want to make, you know, sweet potato chips and sell them, you know, in a grocery store. So you have questions like that. What's the product and where do you want to sell it? So it sounds like Anthony's ready for you guys to like bombard him with questions. Um, <laughs> I'd love to open the floor for you guys. We still have we wanted to leave a lot of time for questions because we know that value-added products are very specific to who you, what you're selling, where you stay. So we wanted to leave this space open for you to ask any questions directly to Anthony, Amanda, or myself um, in regards to anything that you saw today. Um, if you want to put it in the chat and you don't want to ask out loud, that's totally fine. Or I can just stop talking. And I have a hand up, Joe. Take it away, Joe. Yeah. Hey, thanks so much, Stormy. Uh, my question, I think it's either going to be for Aman Amanda. Amanda, uh, question for you on the, um, I guess, on the production side. I love stories. Do you have any stories of someone who started out in a home kitchen making something and then, you know, outgrew their home kitchen and then moved into the food hub or, you know, took it to the next level? Great question, Joe. Um, we have... Of course, I have tons of stories, and um, every member is so important to us. They're like our Juano down there. Um, a big one that I'm going to talk about is is, is Uproot or, uh, Origin that Anthony put on the slide. Uh, Megan is uh, a proud recovering alcoholic, and she started making the ginger uh, turmeric activation elixir at home, and then started sharing them with um, uh, the houseless population downtown Hilo and it made her feel really good and then everyone was asking why are you not selling this and so she started saying okay I'm gonna I'm gonna sell it then her Anthony was a huge huge part of her success and getting her through the HACCP plan and the business world um, because part of it she could have started selling the product a lot faster if she wanted the product to become a health food supplement um, but she wanted everybody to be able to be able to purchase this product, meaning people with SNAP benefits, EBT card holders can purchase this product now because of the steps that she went through to get it certified. Um, she is now selling out in a lot of places and a lot of very bougie stores in Southern California, Northern California. And um, her problem today is upscale. And that's a good problem to have. So we're very proud of her. Good question. We got one in the chat. 
Uh, Michelle asks, can you speak to mailing to the mainland and regulations? Um, it may depend on your product, but again, it's basically the same as if you want to sell it in stores. If you're crossing state lines, um, they want you to have a, a food establishment permit. Um, if you ask the Department of Health, they'll they'll tell you that you you need a food establishment permit. Um, yeah. Michelle, if you have a more specific question, I can try to I can try to answer it. Hey, Anthony, what about um, like packaged salads, like fresh greens type of product? Ah, fresh greens. Yeah. So um, one thing that I didn't really cover on the slides is um, what what is a value added product versus what isn't right? Um, so if you just have raw produce, that's a, a raw agricultural commodity, a RAC, R-A-C. And uh, if you're chopping up a vegetable and then putting it in a package, that's, def that's no longer considered a raw agricultural commodity. So um, you would have to go through the Department of Health uh, and get a a food establishment permit if you wanted to sell those salads through the market. I see. Okay. Uh, would you need a HACCP plan? Uh, hopefully not. Why hopefully? Well, HACCP plans are like, if you get, if you, if you need to get a HACCP plan made, it's going to be like 500 bucks at a minimum. Okay. Um, whereas your food establishment permit ranges between one hundred to three hundred dollars a year, depending on your your risk level. So the food establishment permit um, isn't necessarily cost prohibitive for for people that are starting up, but sometimes a HACCP plan can can feel cost prohibitive. And if you do need a HACCP plan, like Megan, for example, depending on your product you may have to get additional product testing done, which means you'll have to send your product to a laboratory and pay for testing. Uh, but again, that's not gonna be the case with salad, um, but Megan's was a juice. And in order to get her HACCP plan and her product uh, uh, passed, she, has, she had to pasteurize it, which she didn't wanna do. She wanted fresh juice, mm -hmm. but, but the Department of Health determined that it had, it had to be pasteurized. Oh, that was one thing you mentioned, I think, in our run through was that you want to make friends with your Department of Health inspector, right? Because they're all different depending on region and then your county. Right. That, mm -hmm. So w oftentimes we'll we'll have issues with people who have talked to a, a number of different people at the Department of Health, whether they just call the number or talk to somebody else. And they'll get like mixed messages. Um, so what I always recommend to people is if you're getting a food establishment permit, you're going to need to have a specific kitchen, a specific commercial kitchen. And the, D the DOH inspectors work in jurisdiction. So there's going to be one DOH inspector who does that kitchen. So we have the same DOH inspector for everybody at the Hilo Food Hub. So if our people have any questions, we direct them straight to that inspector because the inspector is the one that's going to be answering them in the end anyways. And also with the application, which are online on Department of Health website, and then we'll also share the links. It does have it listed by county, the different applications, but just know all those applications are the same. All, the, the, all that is different is that it says Kauai County and then our address or their address. And then it it's different for like um, Hawaii and then Maui County. So that's the only difference between the applications on the site. Does that make sense? Okay. Thanks, Adrian. I, I would love to hear from from people on on what they might want to make and where they want to sell it. I do have one those. question too, though. First, um, yeah. Ruth Hey, how's it going? Um, 
I wanted to, uh, first, thanks for the session today. Uh, I can kind of segue into that if you want after this question. But one of the questions I have is I have a product I'd like to make out of Ulu and something I'm currently researching right now. Um, but uh, in terms of establishing the food, uh, the food uh, establishment permit, um, if I had multiple things I wanted to make out of it that were derivations, such as think of it as like a solid product versus a crumble of that product, is that two different permits for two different products or uh, what's, what's the, like how many variations of those permits do you need uh, to, if you have like one recipe, but it's just like variations of it to create like a hot versus a spicy or something like that? Yeah, great question. You can have a bunch of different products under one permit. Okay, sweet. sweet, sweet. Yeah. Um, what I can tell you what a lot of people end up doing is, and what I would recommend everybody do is start with one product, um, one size of package, right? Start as simple as possible just to get through the process. Um, and then as you expand, as you make additional sizes um, or add products to your product line, then you just update your, your process flow and send it to your inspector and they just update it. Okay, so, and those uh, those updates are not, free. you don't have to keep, yeah. okay, they're free. Sweet, oh, awesome. Yeah, and what was your product again? <laughs> so uh, uh, we just moved, my, my wife is Michelle, she's the other person on the call. So um, we uh, we have a lot of Ulu on our on our land. Ooh, and, yeah. Um, and so I have this idea that I, I bought the, no, the domain and everything, but I want to make artificial or fake pepperoni, uh, vegetarian pepperoni out of Ulu, so call it Uluroni. <laughs> and so I've got a recipe, I've got a thing I want to try and I, I think like it'll be, it. I think it'll be good. And so again, so you get the notion of hot, spicy crumbles, things, things like that. So I was just curious, like if it was, you know, if I did if we go with the army of, of permits and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, but no, yeah, basically so, you can imagine where it goes from there. Right. That's great. Ulu Roni. I like that. Um, a frozen product like that. And if you're vacuum sealing it, that'll probably require a HACCP. Yeah. Based on the recipe I have, it's already going to have, it's, mm -hmm. it's very detailed, which is one, yeah. of, one of the biggest challenges, but yeah. And you can always try to write a HACCP plan, use chat GPT, see what you can come up with, submit <laughs> it to the DOH, see what they say. If, if you're interested in, in trying to do it, there's no reason you can't do it yourself. It's just a lot of technical mumbo jumbo. Okay. I appreciate may, it. May I add to that? Um, don't ever get discouraged if it feels overwhelming. Please just um, Stormy knows our information, and there, you know, every island has a great crew, and just don't get discouraged. That sounds like a amazing product. Yeah, they have the uh, Ulu Co-op here as well. They have, I think, they have a, a a commercial kitchen as well that we were looking at. You know, when the time comes, if that is, and we still have to prototype it, or I have to still prototype it and find time to do it, but. It is on my list of things to try to start this year. So, um, did anyone else want to share products that they're thinking of making or already making, or if you have any more questions? Um, yeah, sure. I'm hoping to to apply for the grant to do watercress production. Um, I have some experience with aquaponics and so I'd like to, I know there's a demand, a shortage on island. Um, so I'd like to do watercress and I was thinking of maybe doing a, a value added product with like tofu watercress salad or something like that. Um, but if it's going to be, yeah, I don't know, just kind of weighing whether that would be worth it or whether, you know, I'd rather keep it small and simple and maybe just produce the watercress and partner with somebody else to do the value added product. Cause I'm not, too interested in getting involved in all of that got too much other stuff going on like being in the kitchen you mean yeah exactly do you have access to a commercial kitchen mm, not easily not right now yeah that's but really I, yeah, I'm just I'm personally not really interested in doing all of that mm -hmm. kitchen stuff uh, and that's kind of what Anthony spoke to about, like, the partnerships, yeah, and the production mm -hmm. 
in that I, I have a cousin who's great at that stuff and uh, has her own company doing that sort of stuff so maybe you just like what's up summer like make my water be a salad <laughs> <laughs> i feel like both of you could apply actually and get yeah. the things you needed separately and then partner mm -hmm. yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah Shh. don't tell anybody now nah. Um, yeah, partner with a salad maker. <laughs> it sounds like the the watercress is the number one thing. So yeah, get get the watercress growing. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah. needs watercress. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Um, the other thing too is like with commercial kitchens, that's what we see is a really big barrier for people, at least on Kauai. Um, and I think Amanda, you're nodding your head. Yeah, you guys too. Like, so I think. We did have some recommendations in finding a commercial kitchen, like um, reaching out to your community centers in your neighborhood, also your churches. A lot of them have certified kitchens, and that's a great place that you could reach out to to you know possibly rent their commercial kitchen space. Um, what was the other one, Marina? Can you go to the slide? Yes. Sorry. Just trying to say things off the top of my head. More down um back there we go um so churches community centers oh and then the other good one is restaurants not all the restaurants are open seven days a week sometimes they just serve dinner sometimes they're closed monday tuesday those are the days you'd be like hey you can rent your kitchen you don't even have to be there um as long as you get that green green pass um you can use rent their space and and make food while they're closed so those are some some workarounds to finding a commercial kitchen. I know Auntie Jess had a question about like possibly starting her own one. And we'd love to talk to you more about that, Auntie, um, off the call if you want to, too. So, yeah. Um, any other questions, guys? Coming up to the end of the day here together. You guys feel good? Stormy, what does it take to open a commercial kitchen? This is Christy. Hi, Auntie. Um, what does it take? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Um, Anthony, Paola, or um, yeah, you know? it, it depends if you're starting from scratch or if you can get your hands on renting, uh, you know, like an empty restaurant or a a building that previously had a commercial kitchen. That's the that's much easier. And because all you you can just get it back up and running and go through the Department of Health to get uh, to get your your first green pass. Um, but if if you got to start from scratch, then you got to go through the permitting process. And I don't know if it's any better over on Kauai, but it takes a while over on Big Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be open land. Oh, yeah, and it's really a demand here on Kauai, so it's like oh. Yeah. I mean, Malama Kauai, we spent three years building our food hub with a commercial kitchen and a capital campaign of over $3 million. Um, and Adri's on the call too, and she's handling like the opening of the kitchen. And it, it's a, it's a big, it's a big lift. Um, we have a team that's helping us do that and that's building from the ground up. So what Anthony suggested in finding a pre-existing building would be, be the best bet right for your return on interest and time right you don't want to spend all that time it's like type of yeah the other thing we're looking at over here uh is is container kitchens like you can buy like a 20 foot or 40 foot container built out as a commercial kitchen and have it shipped over here but mm -hmm. there's we haven't gotten clear answers to questions to the planning department good to know yeah but you might have but better luck i don't know so like it's so sad that the farmers association of anahola had that building and was processed to be a certified kitchen and nobody up kept it mm. i'm gonna try look into that 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 one that is already a building i'm that's gonna try and look into that stormy okay that's a good idea auntie let us know if you need. So that's the thing, yeah, like tapping into our connections and our network, making good, good friends with your Department of Health food inspector, <laughs> bringing gifts to them. Let them sample your products and then talk story, yeah? 
that's our style anyway. So, yeah. And also having a daughter that works at Department of Health truly helps. Oh, now we got to come to you then. <laughs> yeah, we know our daughter works at Department of Health. <laughs> it's going to be on YouTube, Auntie. Wait, you like me edit that out? <laughs> uh, I think we have a question in the chat. Commercial property is a requirement for commercial kitchens. They no longer allow commercial kitchens on residential property. That's that very well may be the case. Comment, Becky. Mahalo. I don't know. But that makes sense, yeah? Commercial to residential. I think it might, yeah, be based um, on certain places. I know one gentleman right now getting a uh, commercial, or not, he is getting certified on his private property right now mm -hmm. um, in the Pahoa area. But I mean, I, I'll, I want to look this up. That's good info. Yeah. If it's ag, yeah. if it's zoned ag, you can. Mm -hmm. And Becky also said that they do grandfather in stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you guys feel a little bit more prepared to go for your permits and start your business and join our cohort? If not, reach out to Anthony and Amanda on Hilo. Um, reach out to me on Kauai. We can also connect you because all of our food, a lot of our food hubs are connected with each other. We meet monthly. Um, and so we do know other food hubs on Maui, Moloka'i, um, Oahu. Oh, yeah. Um, so if you are from those islands and you need to get connected with your food hub in your area, please reach out to us too. We can do that as well. All right, guys. Oh, yes. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, one, one more question for you guys, since you guys are here. Shoots. We're growing bananas. I got way more bananas than I know what to do with. Mm. Being honest with you, the price at the food hub right now, not even worth my time to harvest the bananas and drive it over there to sell it to them. Mm. I was going to ask who, but I don't like you to put them on blast. Um. Um, but here's here's where okay. we're at. So I got tons of bananas. Um, what island are you on? I am on Oahu. Oahu. Okay. Because, I mean, what do we tell our producers? Like, you need to set the price that you yep. need. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So, and then, you know, value-added products can be another way. I mean, it is more time and labor, but it is more of that cost on top. Like, dried bananas is firing. We sold... We were buying how many for cow cow for cakey was like 600 bags a week yeah. for eight weeks. It's a good push during the summer. It's and that's lot. something you can stock up for in the coming months, right? So you're not having to like scramble. Um, yeah. yeah. I could add for like uh, Stormy said, a uh, value added, maybe connect with the local uh, chocolate company and do a dip, you know, dry dipped bananas. A product that sells pretty good here, also. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's a good idea. Popsicle makers. Mm -hmm. My question for you guys is on the economic side. So, right now, um, we've been experimenting all those things. The dehydrator is going full blast. So, I got bananas dehydrating. The oven's going full blast with banana cookies. Um, <laughs> we've been making banana flour. Sick. But Understanding the economics of that before, you know, taking it to market where, you know, we got the growing figured out, we're making cool stuff, but how do we take a look at the economics of this when launching a value added food product? Yeah. Like I know for our food hub, we made sure we had solar because we knew we'd be running dehydrators day and long time. Yeah. So yep. <laughs> hooked up to solar to cut down on your electric bill was one thing that we did. To make sure that you know profit margin would grow i don't know Joe, do you ever do you ever sell at farmers markets i used to do farmers markets until he did the numbers and it wasn't even worth getting in the car to go there <laughs> right because you have to go all day everything yeah packing storage doesn't even guarantee the sale yeah at, at least when we did it back then when we first got started it didn't make economic sense yeah um so I mean, if you're basically talking about like kind of like a break even, like a financial analysis, essentially, is what I'm hearing. 
right? Like, what do you, what do you need to do in order to make it worthwhile? Like what, what level of volume? Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's just, a you just got to crunch the numbers, I would say. Um, calculating the cost of, of what the commercial kitchen would take. That's, it's easy if you have a commercial kitchen that you can rent, but if you, if, if you don't have a kitchen option, that's kind of your first big variable that you have to quantify into a number. And then how much is your time worth? I guess is, is the other question. You got to put a number on that. Mm -hmm. And there's also someone out in the chat too. Hawaii SBDC can help you with business development. Yeah. Economic breakdown. Um, and then prices change with seasons preserve ahead of time with some other mana all shared. Um, but thank you, Adriana and love kiss farms. Hope that's helpful, Joel. Um, you can also email us too. We could talk story more. I don't want to take up everyone's time, but I really appreciate you guys, um, showing up today. Again, we're, um, we're here for you. <laughs> Reach out. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Hello. Hello. Thank you.